Uh, no, actually, she's at uh, church. How arranged for her to go to Jennifer's memorial service. Oh, that's right. She was Jennifer's stepmother for a while, and they were very, very close. And then when Johnny got sick, uh, Emily donated the stem cells. That was a very generous thing to do, but this still can't wait. Oh, well, whatever it is, I can deliver the message. <laughs> You're making me nervous. Look, I don't mean to worry you, Susan, but that is why I'm here. I want this transition to be as comfortable as possible. What transition? Her hearing is tomorrow. I know. She said you dropped the subpoena off last night. And she spoke with her doctors this morning before she left. Okay, then don't you think you should be making arrangements? For what? Well, in order for Emily to attend this hearing, she needs to be transferred to Oakdale Jail. And from there, depending on the judge's ruling, she'll either be placed in prison or a secure mental health facility. So either way, she won't be coming back here. There is a way to make you say, darling, don't turn away. Don't doubt your heart and keep us apart. I'm right where you are. Say. Thank you, Gwen. Sometimes music expresses our sadness much better than words. It's so hard to accept the passing of a beloved wife, mother, daughter, sister, and friend. But let's not forget our faith, which rests on the belief that the spirit is not conquered by death. Jennifer's spirit will live on in her family, her friends, and everyone she loved. I'm worried about Dusty. Where do you suppose he went? What are you doing here? I just wanted to pay my respects. You're not going in there? No, of course not. I was waiting till the service was over, hoping to see you. Maybe, I don't know, see if there's anything I could do? No. You've done enough. Thank you for joining me in a celebration of Jennifer Munson Donovan's life. Her mother's asked me to please extend an invitation to all of you to join her for a reception at her home immediately following the service. No, I don't think that means us. Go in peace, as Jennifer would have wanted. I can't take any more of this. Paul. Now's not the time, Emily. Uh, I'm on a pretty short leash here. I, I can't exactly pick my moments. What do you want? I heard what you said about raising the baby. It's nothing I haven't said to you before. No, but I, I just, I thought that after we talked, maybe, maybe... Oh, so that's what this is, huh? The noble Emily sacrificing everything to save a dying child? That's not what I was doing. You didn't want my sister to go to bat for you. Of course, I wanted her support, and, and I had you it. She grateful. understood. She... Yes, and you used that. But she's gone now, Emily, and it's just you and me, and I know what you're up to, and you're not going to get away with it. Why are you persecuting her? So this is my fault. You're the district attorney. You have discretion in these matters. And this was a felony. Dusty has given me no indication that he's changed his mind about pressing charges. This is out of my hands. Well, isn't that convenient? So you think this is easy for me? My son Daniel's mother winds up in prison or a psychiatric ward? God knows if he'll even meet his half-brother when he's born. Yes, this is an ugly situation no matter how you look at it, but you better face the facts. Your daughter brought this on herself. Please, please, I'm, I'm begging you. Just, this is the 
the last chance I get to talk to you before the hearing tomorrow. All I'm asking for is a little consideration, Paul. I mean, this is my child, too. I just want to be part of his life. Why is that so much to ask? You're going to jail for the rest of your no, life. No, you don't know that. You don't know that. You've admitted your guilt. Why are we even having this conversation? Because you are using my legal situation to take away my child. And that's not fair. It's not fair to me, and it's not fair to this child. So what do you want? You, you want me to bring the kid to visit you so you can wave to him behind bars? You want me to pray his kindergarten class on the other side of the barbed wire? You want me to give him a, a, a mugshot of you? Shots of you in lockup so we can bring him to show and tell? Of course not. Great. Then we're on the same page. They say these things, these memorials are supposed to, I don't know, put a lid on things. Closure, that's the word. Well, I don't feel like anything's closed. I feel like my heart has a hole in it that will never, ever mend. Yeah, she was your little girl. How else are you supposed to feel? Keep your children very close. That's the message here. What's this? It's from Adam. He overnighted it to me. He wanted me to give that to you. He really wanted to be here, but this all happened so quickly and he's so far away and he wouldn't have made the service, but he's thinking about you, Hill. He's worried about his dad. Tough day, huh? We're all gonna miss her. I miss you, Mom. I have fun at Dad's, but I just wanna come home. It's so sad there. You can talk to him. I know, not today. And I think he's about ready to head out. Why don't we go say hello to your dad? Well, there he is. How are you holding up, huh? Okay, how are you? I'm just so grateful that I've got you. And I'm sure your mom feels the same way. I'm sure she misses having you home. You have no idea how much. I think I do. And I think maybe it's time that we talk. I would never want to put my child in an awkward position. <laughs> but, but the child needs to know that I exist, that I care. I'm filing for sole custody. Meg and I are going to raise that child. That's just the way it's going to be. You know damn well that's not what your sister wanted. She wanted Johnny and our baby to know each other. How? To know his mother. You're going to be locked up. Why would you do that to a child? Make him miss someone so much. Emily, is that kind? Is that fair? You don't know that I'm going to jail or to a hospital. You are delusional. No, no, Jennifer was going to talk to Dusty. She was going to talk to Dusty and ask him to forgive me. Is that what this is about? Is that why you're here? You're here to get Dusty to do something that he doesn't want to do? You know, because, Emily, he doesn't want you walking around free any more than no, I no, do. No, 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 I don't believe you. You don't You don't know what he's thinking. I need I need to talk to Dusty. Are I need, you I need joking? To he just buried his wife. It's time to go, Miss Stone. No, 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 I'm sorry. I need, I need to talk I'm to sorry, Dusty. Please, I please. I have my orders. Please, just let go of my hand. I need to talk Don't to Dusty. Don't make me use the cuffs, man. I'm telling you, please. I have to know what he's thinking. I have to know what Dusty wants. You know what he wants? He wants to testify against you. He wants the world to know that you kidnapped him and you locked him up in, in a farmhouse and that you tortured him and that you would have shot him dead if he hadn't gotten away. No, no, did you? Jennifer forgave me, Paul. See, and if Jennifer saw you right now, she wouldn't want you anywhere near Johnny or her nephew. This, right here. <laughs> is exactly why I am filing for sole custody. You're too volatile, Emily. You're no longer fit to be a parent. I could have done things differently. It's true. I could have ta talked to Dr. Hughes and told him that Jennifer insisted on discharging herself. But it was her decision. And you can't think that I wanted her to suffer or to die. You can't think that. If she had stayed at the hospital, she would have had a chance. Maybe. And maybe not. What do you want from me? Forgiveness, no? No. I want to help you. How? My wife died because of you. How are you going to help me? Heart, 
deep in my heart. A bunch of garbage. Oh, I'm surprised. This from a woman who holds her feet as hostage. Don't look at me like that. You saw what she did. She, she, she attacked that guard. She's completely out of control. You were bluffing. About Dusty, you don't know where he stands now with Jennifer gone. After today, I don't feel like I know anything. Let's go. I think I should talk to Dusty. He's grieving. I just want to find out if he's going to trust uh, And now's not a good time. He's going to feel the same way you felt when Emily cornered you. We'll talk to him tomorrow. Hey, Parker, how about we go have a catch? I got a couple of mitts and a ball in my trunk. I'm dressed up. Yes, we won't go diving for anything. Just a nice, easy catch. We'll be outside. Hal, we don't have to talk about this now. Oh, um, I think that we do. I just lost a daughter, and I don't want to lose his son, too. And I think that that could happen if I keep him away from his mom. From his home. I'm trying to say, I think that I made a mistake having Parker move in with me. I was trying to, hell, I don't know what I was trying to do, but I just, I miss Jennifer so much, I don't think that I can stand it, and I don't want to see that happen to you. I have missed him. And he's missed you too. When I think about all the time that Jennifer lost with Johnny, what I'm trying to say is... I, I, I think I know what you're trying to say, Hal. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, do you want to tell him, or should I? Why don't we tell him together? Hey, pal. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking maybe you should go home with your mom today. You mean it? Yeah. And I think maybe you should move your stuff home, too. Are you sure? If you want me to stay. Now, what I want is for you to come by Sunday morning for pancakes. That's what I want. Yes! And otherwise, <laughs> I think JJ and Sage need you home with them. Thank you, Hal. Come on, old paint. Let's saddle up. Who are you calling paint? <laughs> I know this is a real sad day, but is it okay to be happy, too? Oh, yes. Of course. I'm thrilled that you're coming home. You know, part of growing up is understanding that sometimes it's, it's okay to feel two very different things at once. You know what would be really great? What's that, buddy? If you came home, too. I miss you, too, Parker. And, and I promise that we will make a real effort at setting aside some time every week. I don't want to have to set time. I want you to come home. Yeah, I hear you, buddy, but that's not going to change. Hey, would you like to call JJ from the car and tell him the good news? Why can't things just go back to normal? Well, because they've changed. But you're coming home with me and Sage and JJ, and that's a really great thing. So come on, let's go. <laughs> I want to thank you for everything you said about your sister today. It meant a lot. Well, it meant a lot to me when you asked me to be your best man. That's what you want. Your sister, she loved you very much. Hey, you ready?
Come back to my place. Have something to eat. Be with Johnny. I'd like to spend some time with my wife first. Stop by. The hearing's tomorrow. Yeah, I know. And uh, afterwards, uh, you won't be coming back here. Depending on the judge's decision, they're either going to send you to prison or to a, a psychiatric hospital. Oh. Before the trial? I'm afraid so. I'm sorry. Nobody wants me to be a mother. You don't understand. I mean, now that Jennifer's gone, nobody's on my side, mother. Nobody. Sweetie, what happened at the memorial service? Paul stood up in front of the entire church and told everyone that he's going to raise his own child. No, I'm sorry. He's going to raise his child with Meg. And then later, after I begged him to let me be part of my child's life, he refused. He, he said he's going for full custody. Did Dusty say anything to you? Dusty. Dusty won't even look at me. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean he's unsympathetic. I'm sure he had a lot on his mind. Uh, look, sweetie, I, I think you should concentrate on getting a good night's sleep so you can put your best foot forward tomorrow with the judge. And no matter what happens, I want you to remember something. You did a, a loving, generous thing, helping Johnny and Jennifer. And I, I will always be proud of you for that. Won't your mother be expecting us upstairs? Yeah. I don't know. I, I think I need a, a little minute after that run-in with Emily. She's completely out of control. You want something to drink? No. Okay. What is it? I think she had a point. Before or after she ducked the guard? Okay, what was her point? About your sister's wishes, and you know I don't want Emily in our lives, but Jennifer made it very clear. She's forgiven Emily, and she wants us to do the same. She wants her child and your child to grow up together. Yeah, Jennifer was very loving and could be very forgiving, and if she wants me to forgive Emily, then I'll do my very best to do that, but there's a difference between forgiving somebody and exposing a child to danger. You saw Emily today. She's completely out of control. She's, I, she's dangerous. She's violent, irrational. I don't think it's irrational. fair to judge her right now. Her exactly back is up against happening. the wall. She's going to court tomorrow to be judged because her actions demand it, because the law demands it. I mean, she's a criminal, for God's sake, Meg. But, but you don't think so. I think she loves this baby she's carrying, and it could be a big mistake to keep them apart. No, it's not a mistake. It's common sense. I'm not letting that woman anywhere near my child. Do you hear yourself? You're doing it again. You are trying to take a baby away from its mother, Paul. Do you really want to go down that road again? Well, but this is completely different. You said so yourself the other day. I know. I, I, I know, and I tried really hard to believe that, but after the service today, I realized that's exactly the same thing. You took Jennifer's son away from her for all the right reasons, and you've regretted it ever since. Don't make that same mistake twice. How can you do this? How can you just make a, a 180 like that? When someone dies, it changes things. You see the world a little differently. Well, look, I'm still more than willing to help you raise this child. But I am not ready to lie about his mother or, or deny Emily any kind of access. She's crazy. Maybe. Maybe. And if she is, she'll be sent to a hospital. And, and if not, she'll go to jail. Either way, there is no reason she, she can't send letters or pictures or get some back. Why shouldn't oh. your child know there's a mother out there who loves him? She got to you. Meg, I can't believe this. What are you so afraid of? She's going to be locked up. Yeah, I don't think you should burden a child like that. Then don't make it a burden. Let her send the letters, okay? The kid won't be able to read for another five years. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Paul, I'm worried about you. You're worried about me. You're starting to do that thing you do, 
where you make everything black and white. And look, I, I know Emily's done some stupid things, terrible things, but she's not a monster. Don't make her into one. Look, I am this child's parent. It is my job to protect and to defend. Well, you keep telling yourself that, and you're going to end up hurting the people oh, around you. Oh, come on. Now who's exaggerating? Paul, you're going against your sister's dying wish for you. Maybe you're able to live with that, but I can't. Meg. Emily, I'm going to... Emily, you're scaring me, sweetie. I'm just... I'm just thinking, Mom. About what? My baby. Well, baby's healthy. That's all that really counts. Look, you should be getting ready for bed. I'm gonna go ask the nurse for a plastic bag for your toiletries. I'll be right back, okay? It's okay, baby. If Dusty won't help us, I will find another way. Okay. Everyone have champagne? Is, uh... Thank you. Is everybody here? Well... Not quite, but I don't want to wait. After that very beautiful ceremony, I feel very close to my daughter. And I know that all the love and support that I feel is because of her. So I would like to make a toast to my beautiful daughter, my loving child. To Jennifer. To Jennifer. Jennifer.